Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are showing what our math picks for the 2022 to 2023 school year is. So grab a cup of coffee and let's get into it. Alright you guys, so today's video is actually a collaboration hosted by me and Devine over at Calm in the Chaos Homeschool and lots of amazing other channels have joined us in on this so I will link the playlist down for this down in the description bar. Make sure you check it out once this video is done and uh, yeah, let's get into what our math picks are. So I have this box and if you will notice it is different. We have not used the good and the beautiful yet. And I'm really excited and terrified because we have never really have changed curriculums like big. And so this feels very big and frightening to me. So if you have been here for a while and you saw my my year recap video, I will link it down below if you're interested in watching it. But um I mentioned that we are not going to be using master books. Now you guys know that I have a very vast and all encompassing love for master books. And my son actually wanted to continue using it this year. But, um, you know, I just, I didn't want to keep using it. It just, I love master books and I still think it's a fabulous curriculum. And, you know, I can change to this curriculum and then it could end up not working out for us and we go right back to master books. So I don't have any bad feelings about master books. I think that just once you've used a curriculum for so long, it can sometimes just feel repetitive. And that's what I was getting to with master books. It just, you know, there was just, it was just the same thing day in and day out. It was getting a little boring for me to teach. And so I figured let's, shake things up and switch over to the good and the beautiful and I don't know why I just felt like my heart was being called to it so um, I actually have a a five-year-old and a eight-year-old uh, they will be going into well my daughter placed um, in first grade math for master books and then kinder math for the good and the beautiful so you know, I'm, I'm taking that as like the good and the beautiful is a little bit slightly harder than master books. Um, that's kind of what worries me a little bit. So we will see. Now, some of the reasons why I chose the good and the beautiful over everything else out there is one, a lot of people talk about how much they love it and they enjoy it. And I figure if you know so many people have good things to say then there's got to be you know some kind of depth to this curriculum next i also wanted something biblical i i love to teach from a biblical perspective it's one of the reasons why we homeschool and so that's my requirement for all curriculum is that it has to have some kind of biblical perspective in it um Next is I wanted something that would be a little challenging. I've talked about this in a few of my other videos that we are doing classical conversations. Um, with that, my kids are going to be challenged. It is a it becomes a rigorous program later on down the line, and I want to make sure that if this is something that we are going to to stick with long haul, that I give them all of the tools and I prepare them as much as I possibly can for when they get to the harder. Um, parts of that program. Um, was there anything else? Oh, another reason why I chose this. So um, I'm super excited, you guys. Um, <laughs> I think this is probably like the thing that makes me the most excited about the good and the beautiful. So I'm actually looking to shorten our homeschool year. I feel like my kids, like we don't make it to the 36 week mark. And if we do, it's like, like pulling them to the finish line <laughs> and I don't want to do that I want them to run past the finish line and be proud of all of their achievements and finish school out strong and not like begrudgingly so I'm actually going to shorten our school year next year we're not doing the 36 week stuff no we're not doing that um, so one thing that I really 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 was intrigued about the good and the beautiful is that it is 120 lessons and it's designed to do four lessons a week which works perfectly with our block schedule 
And um, so if you break that down, then you're actually only doing 30 weeks worth of work. And if that's not something to say hallelujah about you guys, then I don't know what is. So I'm actually going to show you guys what the pack for my son and the pack for my daughter. Now, I know that I mentioned that she placed into first grade math with um, master books and then kindergarten math with the good and the beautiful. And so I do think that the good and the beautiful is slightly like ahead because it's harder. But um, I will say that my son was going into fourth grade math with master books and he placed for fourth grade math with the good and the beautiful. So, you know, I don't think that it's like super ahead. If anything, I think that it just depends on the child and what the good and the beautiful versus any other curriculum works into their assessment as what they see important as important. So um, this is what my son's pack looks like. It has not even been opened yet. Uh, I was waiting for this video. So it comes with a mental math map mysteries book. And I'm actually going to turn the camera around so you guys can see this. And then uh, it comes with a math answer key and then their course book. I also purchased him musical multiplication because I wanted just to give him um, different ways to memorize his multiplication facts and make it kind of easy for him. So this is actually a pack of little books and then um, I believe the, the mp3s are able to be downloaded from their site from me purchasing the pack. And then my daughter's math book looks like that. So I'm going to flip around the camera and show you guys a little uh, flip through of each just to kind of see what we've gotten ourselves into. And yeah. All right, you guys. So this is the Math K for kindergarten. Um, I have not opened this book yet. So it's going to be the first time I'm viewing it <laughs> with you guys. All right, so here is their hundreds chart. There's just some information about the course and some frequently asked questions. One of them is um, how long are the lessons? So it says if the child takes longer than, uh, they're all designed to be 10 to 12 minutes. If the child takes longer than 10 to 12 minutes, but is understanding and retaining the information, don't worry, it is okay. If the child takes less than 10 to 12 minutes and is learning new things, we suggest not moving to math one so that your child doesn't have any holes in his or her mouth math foundations so i think that that is um you know something really important to just to mention just because you know everyone's child is different some kids are going to breeze through this and others are going to take longer but it's basically just the important thing is to do at your child's um at your child's pace now it does say that this is a spiral curriculum and that is one thing that I was looking for in a curriculum just because, um, you know, sometimes with master books, it, it felt like there, I know that their curriculum is done as mastery and sometimes that's great, but not all the time because sometimes they introduce things just at, like in one lesson and then they never talk about it again and then it shows up in their review and that's just it it wasn't working for us for that but this i like that it's it's different it you know has colors and so for this lesson they want you to match the colors here that you see here so i like that it has different ways of just working in your um child's you know artistic abilities but also their observation skills and their understanding of different things now I'm not gonna do a flip through of the whole book. I'll just touch on different parts of it. Um, it does look like the lessons, like each lesson is either one to two pages. So far I'm not seeing anything that's more than that and I think that that's perfect for that grade level. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. So this one is reviewing the hundreds chart. It is doing a sheet search which is super cute my daughter is gonna love that this one is a color by number oh that's gonna be fun and it has um they have to do addition facts in order to find what they color it so that'll be really cool my son loves doing those i'm pretty sure my daughter is gonna love doing that too she loves painting and coloring 
So there's different number bonds. And then patterns. There's place values and chalk addition. I actually really like how they have done the place value because, um, you know, not to compare too much with master books, but it is the only curriculum that we have ever used for math. So, I mean, it's the only thing I have to compare to, but they have a place value village and it's basically just like a blank mat. And it says, you know, ones, tens, hundreds, and then your child is supposed to put different things into the different categories. But I like, this is more visual. So I don't know. I like that. I think that that will help my daughter. Um, I didn't like using the place value village and neither did my son. So we never really used it. But I like that this book will be a spiral approach instead of a mastery approach because I want her to just constantly review I feel like that is what helps you become a master or to, you know, master that certain aspect of whatever it is that you're learning is when you're constantly reviewing it instead of, oh, here's one lesson, go be somebody. <laughs> and then months of the year. So this is making her own calendar. And then have the child count backward from 20 to 1 by writing the missing numbers in the boxes below. So I think that'll be helpful as well. And for this, um, for their Math K, they do not have a, a um, answer key just because the math is so basic. So, I mean, you don't really need it. All right, so next is the fourth grade math. Now this is the musical multiplication and these little books are actually flashcards. You will probably hear my children yelling because they are crazy. Now um, this says, here's the instructions. It says to start with set A. So they have uh, set A, set B, and then all the way down to D. And it says turn on the basically like the songs and then your child should listen to the whole set of songs turning the pages in the book as prompted by the music and singing along to the songs each song plays three times the third time the song is played there are blanks the child must fill in as he or she sings so it's all just to help them learn um, their multiplication facts through music which i think will be really fun i'm just gonna set that aside me Okay, now as far as the answer key, I'm not even gonna do a flip through just because, I mean, that's gonna be boring, but they do have an answer key for parents. Uh, I will show you guys real quick, just one. And... Okay, so on to the course book. So, So this one says, how many lessons should my student do each week? And uh, the answer is basically four. It says, how long do the lessons take? The average time to complete a lesson is 35 to 45 minutes. This includes time to watch the video, complete the practice review sections, and uh, practice multiplication facts. That is another um, pro to getting this curriculum, which I completely forgot to mention, was that they have video lessons that walk your child through certain concepts that they're learning. And that is so helpful when you're teaching multiple kids because I can basically set my son up with a video and then I can go and help my daughter with hers. I believe that their video lessons are from grades one to five. They don't have anything for kinder, but that's totally fine. And this is something that I'm completely happy with. Um, is Math 4 completed independently by the child? Says yes, Math 4 is designed for your student to mostly complete independently, though at times children may need a parent or teacher assistance to understand a concept. Parent teachers need to grade their child's work and should do so on a daily basis when possible providing immediate feedback. So um, my only fear is that 35 to 45 minutes doesn't seem long when 
you're doing um you know the math every single day but we do like to do math you know two days a week so I'm a little worried about that but we're gonna see how it goes So less, this is lesson two, and it looks like that is about three pages. I think lesson one was about four. So I can see why it can take 35 to 45 minutes, it, but that's also just gonna depend on your child and you know if they shine in math or if they just need a little additional help in math. And I like that they include this. My son loves doing math. Uh, we actually print out math pages like this that are, um, we just go to Google and type in, you know, uh, color by number math sheets and you can get sheets like this. My son loves doing those. So if your child likes doing them, go to Google. There's lots of free resources. I'm just gonna kind of skim through the book so you guys can get a overall, um, idea of what all it has. It looks like a lot of it is going to be multiplication and division and then working with larger numbers. There's some temperature. Ooh, a multiplication crossword review. Oh, that like that makes my my math nerd heart happy. <laughs> I'm going to have to sit down and do it with him. There's Math Mountain, so it's just different um, math equations. This is dot to dot review, so you're reviewing different um, types of problems. There's some multiplication. I'm not sure what these are. There's some Roman numerals. There's division. So there's just all different types. There's um, some radius and diameter problems to solve. You're learning coordinates. And then median, mode, and range. And then there's a review game at the end, so. It looks fun. All right, so last but not least, Mental Math Map Mysteries. So what this book is, is basically just um, like a practice question for your child to review. So they have, so say for instance, you know, lesson 34. It says split numbers and add. Split each number into tens and ones. Add the tens together, add the ones together, then add those sums together. So, you know, they would break 60 down into a group of 10s and a group of 1s and then 54 down into a group of 10 and a group or a group of 10s and group of 1s and then they would add everything together. Um, and then calendar, name the months of the year backward. So I think that that will be, that sounds fun to me just because, like I said, like I love math. So learning things forwards and backwards, like I think it helps you to just really master that concept. So I'm excited for that. And then they also have on the next page the answer key. So, you know, your child has to do the math, you don't. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn around the camera now. All right, you guys, that is it for this video. This is what we're using for our math next year. I'm really excited. It's, it's scary to change the curriculums when you have been so, um, you know, just accustomed to using one specific one, but I'm really excited for the change. I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be challenging in all the right ways. And, you know, if not, then then we'll change again and it'll be fine. <laughs> but uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed the flip through and just hearing, you know, my different thoughts on it. Don't forget to check out the playlist of all of the other ladies' videos down below in the description bar. I'm so excited to see what they're gonna be using and just get different ideas and hear, you know, how all the different curriculums work. Um, you know, sometimes it's just nice just to see what's out there. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. 
hit that red subscribe button. If you want to see our upcoming collaborations for language arts and electives, then make sure that you hit that little bell so you get notified when we post those. They will be coming up um, every Monday for the next two weeks. And I'll see you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.